Tenho. Welcome to A Thousand and One Ways to Cope with Stress. I am Professor Kinshasa Shabaka, and our guest today is Dr. Frederick Munderson, who continues with part three of the coronation of the King of Egypt. Thank you, Dr. Munderson. Yes, Professor. <laughs> and again, thank you. Uh, so we're, we're, we're dealing with, uh, we're discussing uh, the five elements that precede the coronation, right? And uh, w the first one, and Shwala uh, Lubis, uh, he has his issues, but he gives us good, credible, uh, philosophical, spiritual data relative to this whole Egyptian experience. So he talks about uh, the, the five things, and the first of which is purification, right? So two vases of gold and silver were used to baptize or purify the king. In the heavens, Horison thought baptize the, the, the god. On earth, the priests wearing masks impersonate these two gods and perform that function. There we see on, on, on earth, because uh, we don't really see, we can imagine what's happening up there. We see uh, them pouring Anks from the sacred vessels, ankh or life force being poured over the king. There are also alternating symbols such as the waz and the jet, uh, the jet pillar being poured on him, symbolizing life, power, and stability. The proclamation of the protocol, that is to say, the names that the king will use on his legal documents and how he wish to be addressed. These are the names to be set on monuments and legal documents that are created under his rule. Shwala uh, writes, these are the names under which the new king will celebrate the coronation ceremonies, the festivities of the new year, and the myriad panegyrics. Three, receiving the crown. Essentially, the white and red crown. Not red and white crown, but white and red crown. The king received the crown from the gods. Two priests dressed as Horus and set placed the crown on his head. To be noted, while Horus and Thoth baptize the king, Horus and Set delivers the crown. This may well be given these two divinities are antagonists. Their act is a unifying symbol of healing the nation. Interesting, Horus is a good god, Set is a bad god, but he was good before he became bad. There are four essential seeds in presentation receipt of the crown. Shuala writes, the bestowal of two crowns by set um, of Amos and Horus of Behedet, that is upper and lower Egypt. Again, we must, and I'm, I know you're getting it, but I just have to reiterate upper and lower. White and red, not red and white. Represent red and white, uh, representing red and white. He's saying red and white but it's actually white and red. It should actually should be white and red crowns, okay? The union of two lands between the king's feet. We see the Nile gods and some of the, uh, on the, uh, on the, um, the side of uh, statues or whatever, the Nile gods uniting the land under the king. Uh, the circuit of the wall, he has to run around the particular area where that is set up for the coronation, he has to run around the wall symbolizing his annexation, if you will, of the entire land, which is representative of the, of, of the, the, uh, the place, which is representative of the nation as a whole from south to north. You can't do the whole south to north thing. Uh, and the royal ascent towards the supreme god and into who holds the king in embrace. And finally, release of the four boys. This part of the festival survives at the Temple of Manu, Medin Habu, uh, in the festival of Min, where the four doves are released. Notwithstanding, from the death of the old king, the succession is set in motion in which the crown prince, while he wears the funeral and word of afterlife happening, you know, the, judge, the old king is being judged up there and uh, he's, he can't sit on the crown, on the throne until, you know, 
He has to undertake a series of visits to holy sites to conduct certain rituals and recognize and praise ancestral kings and God. We have to understand, as uh, I had said to my sister earlier, that Dr. Obengo had said that we must worship and constantly invoke the names of our ancestors who have done such wonderful things in moving us along the path that we have traveled and the experiences that we have encountered and recognize how they were able to challenge the oppressor. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, G2 Wissu, Sonny Carson, uh, um, Mary McLeod Bethune, um, uh, Harriet Tubman, Tubman, uh, Reverend Schillingsworth, um, uh, 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 Ivan Van Sertma, Cheek Ante Diop, all of these Meet the Sharice Prevail, all of these great ancestors. We must invoke them because they give us strength. They solidify our, our, uh, our, our, our rejection or obstinacy to the oppressive behavior we constantly must confront on a daily basis. So, uh, in this coronation, we have the worship of the ancestors as all as a system of kingship in Egypt. They, you know, we can't deny that this is what we are supposed to do. The gods and successive spirits were considered ancestors. The ancestor spirits formed a force that supported the king. Statues and standards of the ancestor kings and spirits were carried in possessions of festivals. The two ancestor shrines in the south and the north contained spiritual power that surrounded and supported the king. This is where the two crowns are placed on the king's head. First the white crown and then the red crown. The crowns were charged with power and transformed the king from a mere mortal into a god. His thinking was no longer as a man but as a divinity. You have to understand that once he is born and he is predetermined to be the heir apparent, first he's, washed, he's um, uh, uh, baptized and along the journey, uh, several times he's baptized, he is the man who will be king. Is a human, but once he is coronated, he is transformed through spiritual potency into a god whose life force comes from heaven, and he's able to do what, what he was predetermined. But by the same token, he has to live by the, by the tenets of Mart, the axioms of Mart of true justice, righteousness. And that's why he's judging the afterlife, to see if he did uh, um, live out his destiny. The ancestral shrines were primarily located at Heliopolis or An. They were made of, of flimsy material and could be dismantled and re erected where the said festival of juvenation was held. Heliopolis which was founded or un, founded by the Anu, the black people who went down the Nile. Even though he is crowned at Karnak or any other holy sites throughout the land, he has to return to Heliopolis. And that's where the icing on his crownly cake is placed, okay? Uh, I say it's coronation cake, I would say. They were made of film material. Okay, so he, uh, and uh, the, the, it's like a shrine set up. Okay, uh, it's made of film material that can be dismantled and transported to different areas. If you want to be crowned, let's say use our, our nation as an example. I want to be crowned in, uh, in Georgia. So we dismantle this structure that encases the, the, the kingly or coronation experience. But it has to be reassembled at the place where the spiritual power resides. They were made of films of material could be dismantled and re-elected where the said festival of rejuvenation was held. This also applied to the coronation of Memphis and Ortiz. However, only Heliopolis could confer the spiritual potency that transformed the king into a deity. The ancestral spirits, though deceased, entities are still concerned about the community welfare the king serves, and so they surround and support him by infusing mat. The king cannot officiate in the temple until he is crowned. Until he is crowned. When, he crowned he be, when crowned, he becomes the son of God, and so can relate to, as a son to his father. 
Now, in order for the coronation to take place, the old king must die. The succession involves certain responsibility he must perform as the king awaits burial. The enthronement comes after the coronation. For this is when he is empowered to exercise full power as king. He is now imbued with the responsibility to, the resor to return the society to normalcy. Remember now, the society is in agony. The, 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 the whole notion of the divine um, experience of state has been broken. So they are awaiting, the whole culture is awaiting the resuscitation of kingly rule so that the society can now progress forward. He is now imbued with responsibility to return, return the society to normalcy. Then we have the mummification of the king, the burial, the opening of Mount Severian, and the word from beyond at the conclusion uh, of the judgment. We are told then that he made it. So the five acts, there are five acts preceding the coronation. Uh, again, I'm reiterating this. The purification. Two vases of gold and silver are used to baptize the king. The images of Ankh and Waz are seen pouring, being poured over him, symbolizing life, power, and stability. Protocols of the uh, proclamation of the protocols, how I intend to be called. So these are the names we use on monuments. He has five principal names. The Horus name, a successor to his father Horus, just as Horus succeeded his father Osiris. The two ladies, Negmit and Wajit, female protectors of the South and North Kingdoms. Horus of gold, he is made of gold, same as the substance of the gods, which is everlasting. Sudanbat, his, this is the coronation name. He is now made king of Upper and Lower Egypt. And the son of Ra, that is his birth name, and his King of Egypt name and his birth name is generally shown in the cartouche or the Egyptian word for it is Shenu. The protocols, uh, uh, for example, if we use Thutmosis III, his Horus name is Horus, mighty bull, shining in Thebes, favorite of the two goddesses, enduring in kingship like Ra in heaven. His golden horrors, mighty in strength, splendid in diadems. His suit and bat, up on Low Egypt. King of up on Low Egypt, lord of the two lands, Men Kepra. Men Kepra, my grandson's name. And son of Ra, Tutmosis, beautiful of form. So he receives the crown from the gods. Two priests dressed as horrors and set place the crowns on his head. He now becomes king of Loi, Egypt. This is where the spiritual, metaphysical, and, phys uh, and mystical transformation takes place, moving him from being a mortal to a deity. This is where he becomes a god in spiritual power, omniscience, and mathematical capabilities, giving everything is seen from a mathematical perspective. Circuit of the wall. He has to run around the sites enclosure wall. Release of the birds, release of the four birds or doves to carry the tidings to the four cardinal points, south, east, north, south, north, east, and west. Uh, I talked about Ames Nefertari. She was the ancestress of the 18th dynasty. She seen wearing a dress of white, red, and blue, not red, white, and blue. And we've got to be careful of the trickery in presentation. We are more familiar with red, white, and blue, but it's not red, white, and blue. It's white, red, and blue. Uh, we must address the, car the, the misdirection of the four cardinal points. It should, be, it should be south, north, east, and west. Let us suppose the coronation takes place at Heliopolis, which is in north. Then it's, it is reasonable to see the first place to be informed would be the south. Go up there and tell those people. I mean, we're already in the north. You don't need to uh, tell the people in the north. They, they see it. But the four boys will fly south, north. East, west, <laughs> more, 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 uh, uh, more important as Dr. Diab so lucidly informed. All the historic sites and monuments in the south, as well as the king's title as king of Upper Low Egypt. Orientation of the reporting of the data is from south to north. The Nile flowed from north, from south to north. Mesopotamia rivers flow from north to south. So when they, when these scholars. Uh, orient 
Egypt from north to south, they are using the Mesopotamian calculus, which is not the African. When the Africans went to Mesopotamia, they said, wow, their river goes from south to north. It's like going up river when going down river. So that's how they use their orientation. Therefore, European orientation is based on, not on the flow, on the flow, not of the night, but Asiatic European conception of the body of water. Thus, the ingrained impression is as he ascended the Nile, Dr. Diab corrected Edward Neville as he referred to the West being on the right. West is really on the left, because when you're facing north, east is to the right, and west is to the left. Diab uh, caught it, and he said, Neville was wrong, because Neville located west on the right, which means that he was climbing the river, not following the flow of the river. Given the Egyptian descent of the river, west would be on the left. They could not change the numbering of the gnomes. You mentioned the first gnome was at Aswan. The oppressor wants to destroy the historic memory of the African. This was never happened. The great scholar and visionary Dr. Theophile Benger, Dr. Yad, research assistant, right-hand man, uh, insisted we must continue to devote the name of our, our ancestral heroes. In, our, in every undertaking, we must invoke and utter the names of Kwame Nkrumah, Marcus Garvey, Nelson Mandela, Winnie Mandela, Malcolm X, Faust Warren, Coffey, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Dr. Dr. Carruthers, Sonny Carson, G2 Wilson, Bill Lynch, Michael Jackson, Fanny Lou Hamer, Betty Shabazz, Mamie Club Balloon, Reverend um, uh, Dr. Feller, Reverend um, uh, Schillingsworth, and so many others of our heroes. Recently, we lost Stan Kennard. So many of our heroes must be remembered, but in remembering them, they strengthen our resolve so that we can confront and contend with challenges we will face. And this is what we must teach our children. We are here to stay. We will not, we will not go quietly into the night. Professor? Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What? A challenge it is to just comprehend the massive amount of knowledge. And we are such, we have such gratitude to you, Dr. Munderson, for your scholarly work, but your heartfelt gift to us. And we thank you for listening to A Thousand and One Ways to Cope with Stress. Now we have just a few more minutes, and if you want to say something more, yeah. I mean, I can't say there's anything you've left out because <laughs> it has just been a profound excursion into our antiquity and into our, I call this our well-being. And I uh, was just recently uh, gifted by you with a marvelous painting of- uh, the, the judgment. The judgment. and. Uh, I, I feel so grateful to you for that, and you described that and, and what that meant and the, the feather and weighing the heart. And, and I just feel somehow the way you describe that idea of it is the heart that is the brain, not the brain that is the brain. In other words, yeah. we have to really be clear that our heart must be the thinking instrument for the way we conduct ourselves That's in our true. lives. That's true. The, the, and that the, is so the brain is a, it does the thinking, but the heart, you know, you you have sorrow, you say I have a heavy heart. Yeah. Uh, you're feeling happy, I have a light heart. So the heart is the, uh, and the heart is a workhorse yeah. because it sends everything where there's all the, the fluids or what have you. And the heart uh, informs the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I must, uh, I must thank you, Professor, for giving me the opportunity to, to, to sit with you and to share my research with you mm. and your audience. Thank you. Okay, this is, this is uh, th these are challenging times. And as we speak today, who know we're we encapsulated in the in the uh, in the studio, but there's a lot going on in our world outside, and uh, that is why we must be we must be resolute in our understanding of our reality. 
Okay? Uh, we are not people with golden spoons or silver spoons. We got wooden spoons. And we got to make sure that our wooden spoons function like the golden spoons. But you had mentioned um, the point that made before intellectual autonomy. We must teach our, our children how to use, how to develop intellectual autonomy to be able to empower them to be, to interpret any form of document, even the discussion that they may involve themselves in. As young people, you are in the student government and you're part of discussions and what happens. You got to be versed in even seeing before he does what the opponent will think. Now, in order to Dr. Dr. Leonard James, which is the, the master that taught me and so many others, he insists that we develop this intellectual honor. How you do it? By learning about the eight major social sciences, geography, history, archaeology, anthropology, uh, 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 science, uh, economics, psychology, and um, sociology and be able to understand how these eight different strands of reality impact interpretation of anything that we encounter. Dr. John Clark said, if it doesn't elevate your freedom, turn it in the trash can, right? Now, once we do that, and we, be, we develop how to do, uh, uh, understand the role of cause and effect, and do comp critical comparative historical analyses with new interpretations and what is the significance of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. And all of this here, in terms of the tools of intellectual autonomy, sets you free. Okay? But you got to understand, you have to pay the price now. You got to put in the work. Okay? You put in the work, and then you will get the benefit. You never see the farmer reaping from a, 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 a frozen or a, a barren field. Come of spring with the rains and what have you, he plants his seeds. And then, through summer, he's, the, 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 fruit, the fruit ripens and he's able to get his benefit. So you got to put in your time now, and then you'll be able to... To reap. <laughs> to reap. But, right. you know, uh, and especially for young people. Life expectancy in America today is 70, 80. I just recently. It's actually, it's lowered now, and especially for men. Did you know that? The, the life expectancy has been shortened. Well, two weeks ago, I celebrated my 70th birthday. Oh, congratulations. Okay. And but, may you have many, many more. I, I could <laughs> use that. I could use many, that. Many but the more. point is that, take for instance, an 18 year old, 20 year old. Give them all that is, and or you live through the, the, the axioms of man, true justice, righteousness, and so forth, balance, order in your life, right? You can live for another 50 years. So you take five or even 10 years to prepare yourself, undergird yourself with a, a, a proper education. And you're going to go to school and get an education to get a job. You get an education to learn how to think. And that's why intellectual autonomy is such a useful tool. Then you got 40, maybe 50 years to enjoy the, 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 the good things of life, okay? And uh, as, as, as you age, bring good into the world. Help your brother, help your fellow man. Reduce, try to eliminate is Isfit is evil. Isfit is not good for humanity. Goodness is good. Like I told my friend earlier, uh, I asked how he was doing. He said, good. I said, well, good is good, and we must work for good. And that I want to say thank you, Professor, because your uh, giving me the opportunity has motivated me to do the work to report to you so that the wider audience can benefit. And uh, uh, I, I hope to continue our work. Uh, so I pray for that. And uh, the gratitude is just uh, mounting. I mean, it's just incredible uh, how much we appreciate you. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you also for your family uh, and the way in which they um, support you. <laughs> your, 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 because uh, you are just... You know, it's interesting incredible. that you say that because... Yeah. And I learned this from uh, 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 Dr. Um, um, Jeffries' yeah. wife, yeah. Rosalind Jeffries, you know. And I told my wife, I, you know, she was first and taking the back of it, that she sort of came on board, you know. I said, you know, your husband is married to the community, you know, so, uh, and we're in, in the beginning, you know, she said, oh, well, you're going out all the time. You know, she realized what we are doing is in the benefit. Each and every one of us must discover our destiny and pursue it. And in my destiny, and again, Dr. Leonard James, my, my, my mentor, uh, he's in a challenging situation today. I understand he was in the hospital, what have you, mm -hmm. right? But, but he's the one who recognized in me and encouraged me mm -hmm. and, and insisted that I do what we are undertaking. That is, search for, discover truth, and expose it. And I want to thank everyone for assisting me in this endeavor. Well, I thank your family, and I thank you, because the truth will set us free. Thank you for listening. Learn well from what Dr. Manderson has stated and shared with you, and by all means, get a hold of his books. They are so full. They're